Hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of A Rebel Without Applause, coming to you as I always do from this, my little television studio apartment right here in the wood of the holly. What you just heard were the rhythmic stylings of a very talented jazz artist on the run. What is St. Petersburg's loss is definitely Los Angeles's gain. He's with me on the other side of this digital divide coming to me from across this massive mountain range called the Santa Monica Mountains because he's somewhere in the San Fernando Valley. Welcome to Rebel Without Applause, Stepan Vasiliev. How are you, my friend? Hello, hello, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, everything is good. Yeah, Thank you for inviting me. So. Well, it is more than my pleasure. And for I just want to do a brief outline to the folks out there. Your journey to this moment is is a journey of special interest. It's a long and courageous journey. You were uh, raised and born and got your sort of musical training in St. Petersburg, Russia. But uh, just a few months ago, uh, you came here all the way from St. Petersburg. Talk to me about just starting off how long you've been here and your journey from Russia to here. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's a long story. Yeah. I I came uh, to LA uh, in January, so uh, it's it's not. <laughs> I'm a new one here. What and it was a long road. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it was very hard to me to see that my country is going certain direction uh, sometimes uh, I think it's unreal uh, all these things surrealism mm -hmm. <laughs> Russian government uh, they all gone crazy but uh, I was constantly disagree with Putin's uh, politics before he started the war because of corruption fake elections, state organized crime, government crime, so many things. So, uh, but uh, uh, I always, uh, always supported opposition because it's my country and uh, I was born there. I wanted to make it better for my family, uh, for my children. Yeah, but uh, the last year uh, I was downcast and really did not know what to do and where to go. Yeah, all previous 2022 20, year I was in depressed mood. Yeah. Uh, I could not play music. I canceled most of my concerts. So. I thought about how how could I help them, all these people, you know, it was so terrible. What I did, um, I did charitable concerts to support Ukrainian people. Mm -hmm. I gave away flyers, you know, anti-war flyers on my concerts. I'm a musician. I did. I did what I could, yeah. But uh, I didn't realize how dangerous it's, it was to play concerts to support Ukraine and Russia. So, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, there is a law discrediting of Russian armed force and its operations, imprisonment for, for up to five years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's... It was dangerous to speak about my political position with my colleagues because I'm not only a performer, I'm a teacher too. So, uh, and even with friends, it was not safe to speak about political position. People divided in Russia, friends became enemies, you know. Yeah, and after some events uh, in my life, some dis disturbing events, I had I had to leave Russia. Um, I didn't think about 
what country to move. I just had to leave. Uh, didn't really know if uh, they will let me out. So I bought first. I bought ticket to Turkey because it was <laughs> the cheapest one, and there were not so many a few countries to go. So uh, so this the Turkey was the first step. Yeah, and after I moved to US. So now I'm in LA. So <laughs> yeah. well, I was looking for a safe place, and I knew that United States has a highest level of human freedom and civil and political rights. Well, that's encouraging to hear because you know over the last five or six years we've been in our own struggles in defense of our own democracy right here in the United States. The biggest enemy is within. Uh, and it's encouraging to hear that this is still a place of refuge where someone like yourself, who so courageously was able to get out of this, you know, his own country in, in a way to protest uh, what was going on there. Now, you didn't come here alone. You came here with a, a family. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I'm not a hero. You know, I, I just wanted to, um, to be in a safe place. I was scary. I was afraid for my family, for my children. Yeah, and I'm here with my family, my wife, and two children. Now let's just go back a little bit, since we're talking about this war. You know, I did a series of uh, inner uh, conversations with people from the Ukraine uh, who were experiencing this on the other side. What was the experience like for you uh, going back? Well, I guess it was February a year ago. Was this a surprise? Was this something that you were fearful could happen? Talk about that period of time right up until the war started and then when it began. Um, like I said, uh, before before the war, I always supported the position. Uh, you know, uh, some political, uh, like Alexei Navalny. <clears throat> so, but <clears throat> then the war started. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought... It's, uh, uh, I don't, I didn't know what to think, really. I thought that all gone crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it was unreal. Yeah, so I was shocked. <laughs> you were shocked. Yeah. So it was a surprise. Yeah. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And were you, I know that, uh, well, I guess it was a year ago, there was a conscription, you know, they were getting more, trying to get more people into the Russian military. Was that something that you were at risk for, to be drafted or uh, taken into the armed, ser uh, the armed services? Yes, I think so. I, I think they drafted every man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, of course it was against the law, because I never served in army. I uh, never served in military because I'm a musician. So, <laughs> yeah, but you know. All these things are crazy. And how long were you in Turkey? So you went from Turkey uh, to the United States. How yeah, uh, I was there about a month because uh, I was waiting for my family, uh, my family, because they had no passports. Uh -huh. and they were waiting about a month to get them. So and about a month I spent in Turkey. Waiting. Waiting, yeah, I was waiting, and and I was looking for a place to go because you know Turkey is not a safe country, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, and I was looking for a place, and yeah, I knew that United States is. Had had you been to the United States or out of? Well, firstly, had you been out of Russia or performed elsewhere before, and had you ever been here to the United States? No, no, I have never been in the United States. But of course, yeah, I performed a lot of uh, different countries, mostly Europe. Uh, I was in Poland, Finland, Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, Ukraine. So many European countries because there are a lot of jazz festivals in Europe. So and we are close to Europe. So and. I'm guessing that you're not alone. I mean, that there's been a tremendous exodus or people leaving, artists especially from Russia, whether it's musicians or writers or film people or whatever. Um, do, you, do you have many friends that have also left? 
Yes, I have friends, but not only musicians. Yeah, like you said, um, a lot of a lot of artists, a lot of um, creative people. Yeah, because uh, uh, they are like uh, I don't know revolutionaries. They they, uh, <laughs> they can't live in this country, and they can't uh, fight with the government because they are people of art and culture. So do uh, what they can do is um, to tell about it to others people mm -hmm. to the whole world so is there just you know i'm sitting here reading the newspapers and uh looking online and following this is there some basic sort of maybe something that you'd like to just correct in people's minds about what's really going on in russia like to what extent the, the the population is really behind this or just the nature of the opposition uh, just misunderstandings that people like me might have about what's really going on in russia because just from my point of view i think the best hope to end this war is within russia you, you know within the political opposition there and i'm just curious if you have anything that you'd like to share about that yeah uh, russia is a big country yeah there are so many different people uh, nationalities religions so uh, uh, <clears throat> but uh, the problem in russia is with people who rule the country so uh, it's not fair yeah because i think that uh, putin lives with his own interests he does not care about people sometimes i think it's unreal yeah and uh, common people don't want all this shit. Uh, they want to live in peace. Ukrainians, our brothers, we are one people. Why would we fight? I can't understand. Had you ever performed there or in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, I have been uh, several times. Uh, I performed. Uh, there is a city, um, Berdyansk. It's uh, on the seashore, and there is a Berdyansk uh, jazz festival. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was a nice place. Yeah, and uh, the festival was very good. A lot of artists from Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, there are, were a lot of uh, jazz festivals in Ukraine. I think the biggest was in Kiev, uh, jazz in Kiev. So. Well, how do I get a gig? How do I get a gig? I want to get booked. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get booked yeah. with, with Stefan, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the world I stage so, all-stars uh, making it to, uh, you, you know, uh, Ukraine and hopefully Russia sometime sooner. You know, I just want everybody to know, I met Stepan in the coolest of hangs here in Los Angeles. And like... Uh, homing pigeon like radar he found it within weeks of his arrival in los angeles and that's the world stage which is in a section of los angeles called lamurk park and every thursday night it's a, like a party at least it's been a party for me for 10 years it's been like my my music school um and just a few weeks ago i saw this new guy you know come up there and he got on the bandstand and he's got this really delicate touch with the Russia, the brushes. And who is this guy? You know, he's totally cool. I'd never seen him before. And we got to talking and he told me a story. And I, immediately I felt like this is someone, you know, who I'd really like to talk to. So just off the bat, I want to thank you for being here and also coming down to the world stage. Talk about that experience for you, you know, coming in you know you don't know anybody and there you are at the world stage and what was that like or how did you find it or tell me about that yeah uh, when i came to la i found several uh, jazz clubs uh, several uh, jam stations and um, uh, i was trying to check all of them and one day i came to the world stage i i, I didn't know that uh, it was a uh, billy higgins club i just uh, <laughs> knew the name the world stage and uh then i came to it uh i knew that this place was founded by billy higgins and billy higgins is one of my favorite drummer 
so um, he did ma so many records so and it was uh, so cool to see uh, so many musicians uh, great musicians in one place yeah I met you there, so <laughs> I don't know about great, but <laughs> no, no, yeah, there were so many fantastic, good musicians. Yeah, saxophone players, trumpeters. Yeah, you, you I like your playing. Too. Uh, well, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Cla clarinet, clarinet, not so popular. <laughs> no more. Like nobody, pl nobody plays the licorice anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they. We played Dang. that last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Stable Mates by Benny Stable Goldson. Mates. So I'm curious, you know, you what like you heard all these blue note records, you were able to get them in, in Russia. And I'm just curious about your musical journey as a young person, how you found jazz or jazz found you, and what kind of training was available, what's the scene like in St. Petersburg? And how that came to make such a, a powerful claim on your soul. Yeah, uh, my first uh, music teacher, uh, he was a trumpet player. And, uh, he gave me uh, some records. Yeah, it was the most, mostly trumpeters. I discovered Clifford Brown, Chet Baker, Miles. So, and uh, I was in love with jazz. So, I did not understand the music at that moment, but I liked the sound and the mood of this music. After uh, I have studied in St. Petersburg State University of Culture and Arts, and uh, I have a degree in Bachelor of Fine Arts and Music Education. But uh, I think uh, the most important thing in training is listening to music. So. Jazz records gave me really good training. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, whenever I ask somebody, you know, if they're playing music, you know, I always say, I never say, what are you working? I say, what are you listening to? Yeah, that's like, right. Yeah. Who, who are you listening to right now? You know, and I, I feel like, because I think, like, for me, I didn't grow up in music. I didn't have music lessons or any of that. I didn't play anything. I was more interested in playing baseball and all this stuff. And then I was a comedian and an actor before I really even touched the clarinet. But once I did, it just kind of, it just grabbed me. And it was like, the reason was not so much, oh, I love the clarinet, which I do. But what I really loved was how do I play this music? I want to participate. I just don't want to consume. I want to participate. And that was sort of my, you know, what guided me down this you know, whatever my journey is, you know, it's not been that successful financially, obviously in jazz. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you if you're looking for a way not to make money, I would encourage someone to get into jazz immediately. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> the best way. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you know, one of the things I wanted to say in response to what you've been saying is that I think it's important for people to kind of make a very powerful distinction between the current political moment in Russia and the beautiful, rich, and extended cultural history of Russia, which which you know spans across so many um, genre and types of creative endeavors, whether it's Tolstoy or Tegenev or Dostoevsky, you know, or Anton Chekhov in the theater, or Stanislavsky at the Moscow Art Theater. Um, or Tchaikovsky, you know, with the classical music, or Eisenstein in the cinema, and, and many others, uh, to which, you know, they're not on yeah. the tip of my tongue, that we, the, the Russian contribution to world culture and art is extensive and ongoing. And, you know, obviously, you're part of that um, tradition. And so, sometimes some of the most intense cultural flowerings come under the pressure of political tyranny. Um, so I just wanted to say that, and I'm, I'm interested in your, your comments or reaction about that, you know? Yeah, Russia has a big history. So, uh, and um, a lot of great people uh, were, in Russia, and uh, I, I think still, <laughs> yeah. But uh, we, 
I think we had always problem with the people who rule the country. Yeah, I don't know why, but uh, uh, when I uh, looking back uh, in the history, so I understand that every uh, several, uh, every ten or maybe twenty years in Russia, something happens. <laughs> so. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's it's just a place in the world <laughs> there uh, can all this happen. Maybe it's uh, not a good place uh, to, to live because I uh, I can explain. I can give you an example with some uh, places in the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some islands, yeah, in the ocean. Uh, there are always earthquakes, for example, or tsunami. So and uh, they are not guilty these oceans, yeah, because <laughs> they just situated in this place. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I think maybe uh, Russia is the same <laughs> story because it's the middle between West and East, and I don't know. <laughs> well, as I that these are some of the, I mean, jazz is a quintessentially Western expression. To me, it is clearly the music of freedom. It is the music that invites multicultural um, expression. You, you know, jazz can find its roots in the American black slave experience, but without those European instruments, and you know, it would have taken a different form. So essentially, I feel like jazz is the living expression of the hopefulness for like a multicultural democracy of freedom. And this to me is the musical language of that. And so of improvisation and, it just that's I guess that's part of why I know it's why it reached me, you know, why I wanted to play it in ways that I, I maybe couldn't even articulate or understand. I'm guessing that that was the same a similar thing for you on some level. Yeah, of course, jazz is music of freedom. So. Uh, uh, so that's why it was born in U.S. So I think the one country that <laughs> there it could be happened so it was united states uh, but uh, yeah and all all people from all the the world uh did uh something for this music and it's a mix yeah it's not a, only african culture or jewish culture or european culture so it's the mix of all cultures so uh, and i think that's the reason why it's so free yeah well, that the music is so free because we are all all nationalities all countries in one mix so it's cool it's a, it's the music of the human family it, talk about step on yeah. what the jazz scene is or was like in st petersburg or moscow or elsewhere like what's that scene like uh there are so many good uh, musicians uh, in russia uh, because uh, i think um, today uh, because of internet we have information you can live uh, everywhere you know in the on the planet so and have information about how to play what to play yeah you have uh, you can listen uh, records so there are a lot of great musicians, yeah, and there are a lot of uh, young talents, yeah, because uh, you can find, uh, yeah, uh, I think you can find good jazz uh, artists everywhere on the planet. <laughs> so, and like during, Russia, let's say, so. uh, let's say during a normal week for you in Petersburg, would there be like a couple jam sessions or clubs you could go to or? Was there enough gigs to be financially supportive? And also, were 
was the public attending them? Uh, uh, yeah, we have uh, several places, several jazz places. It's not uh, so many like in LA because in LA every day you can visit a jazz concert and not only one. So you can uh, hundreds, <laughs> I think you can not maybe hundreds, but several concerts in a day, every day uh, in a week. So in Russia we have jazz clubs, but uh, it's not uh, so popular because just music is not popular uh, and uh, not so many people uh, visiting uh, these concerts yeah we have jam sessions too yeah we have traditional jazz jam session yeah because we have uh, musicians uh, can play and uh, traditional jazz traditional jazz so well i was impressed you know watching you and listening to you like we got into some forms that were a little bit different and you knew exactly, you know, you were hip to it. You, you didn't have a moment's hesitation out, up on the bandstand. So clearly you've had a chance to listen. I'm curious during Soviet times before the internet, if those records found their way across into Russia and people were listening or what, what do you know about that? Yeah, I know that uh, most of the records were forbidden. Yeah, mm -hmm. were forbidden because uh, yeah, in Soviet Union, jazz was uh, like a music of freedom, but it <laughs> and that's why it was forbidden. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, there were uh, jazz artists, uh, good jazz artists. Yeah, they were trying to uh, play music. Yeah to do some records. So the music was finding its way across these boundaries, even though it was it was forbidden. Was your was your own family or your parents, were they musicians? Did they introduce you to the music or how did you sort of first start hearing it? Uh, no, my family, my parents uh, were not musicians, but uh, they uh, liked to listen to the music. So we have, uh, a lot of uh, vinyl recordings, mm -hmm. yeah, cassettes. So it was different music, classical or some Russian popular music. So wow, the now reason, uh, that the reason I like the music and uh, my first teacher, music teacher, introduced uh, me with jazz. So you didn't go the classical route or into the conservatories in terms of your education, which I would guess, you know, also Russia turns out the great ballerinas and, you know, there's such a, a rich tradition there, but. I'm yeah, of course. My, uh, 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 my daughter, my daughter, uh, training rhythmic gymnastic, uh, rhythmic gymnastic is like, uh, gymnastic with a bullet <laughs> right dancing yeah it's very popular in russia so and she, you have some uh, good clubs gymnastic rhythmic gymnastic clubs here in la so. is she is she doing it here too yeah of course yeah oh good uh we've uh, we, we found a good uh gymnastic club in the valley somewhere training yeah yeah in charge yeah oh okay Wow. Now, here's a question, and it's political. How long do you think Putin will be able to hold on to power? Oh, it's a very hard question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, I, um, I have no hope <laughs> that he will live this place uh, only if he uh, will die <laughs> that would be it's it only, so his way, so his he has such a powerful grip on the the reins of power you don't anticipate that for example there might be some sort of revolt amongst uh, the generals or the ministers and refuse to uh, follow his orders you don't think that's a realistic possibility going forward oh uh, yeah um uh sometimes i thought but it was a long time ago that 
we could change something. That's why I supported the position. So, and I was trying to do something for my country. But now I think it's, uh, I realized that the, the problem is much bigger and I think it's unreal. Unrealistic. Unrealistic, yeah. You know, when, I, when people have asked me, I, I said, and perhaps I was looking through rose-colored glasses, but, you know, in World War I, as Lenin famously said, the Russian soldiers uh, voted with their feet. And um, that was spelled in large part the end of the czar, you know, and the beginning of the revolution. And I just thought, well, maybe this will happen here, that the soldiers who have been just shattered, <coughs> the Russian soldiers in, um, in Ukraine will vote with their feet. And um, that would, you know, maybe spell the end of Putin, but hasn't happened yet. You know, people scared uh, because of um, the jail, because they scared, they don't want to be killed. So that's why I think that, I think it's impossible. Yeah, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows, yeah. Well, I mean, like sometimes we're surprised in history. So for example, most of the American experts did not predict the fall of the Soviet Union when it happened. <laughs> what what's going on here so it's like a crack in a dam sometimes you can't see it but when it blows it blows fast and it's it it sometimes feels like a surprise and i thought perhaps that you know might be a possibility in russia based on history and i guess that's an open question but you don't seem too confident about that uh um yeah but uh, <laughs> my, can you explain it uh, maybe in some other words because i <laughs> well what i'm saying is sometimes we get surprised by political events yeah you know we don't see them coming uh like i said earlier the american government didn't even predict the fall of the soviet regime it just came quickly and like what and <laughs> yeah so what I was saying is maybe that we could be, there could be a similar surprise coming, you know. Maybe, maybe, who knows, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure because I, I lived in Russia, uh, so I know the situation and, but who knows, yeah. <laughs> it was in the history, but maybe it could be right. again, but yeah. Talk to me a little bit about um Alexei Navalny. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the man who, yeah, he he was trying. Yeah, he tried to do something. Yeah, uh, there were a few people in the government. Yeah, political people who tried. Yeah, we. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people in Russia supported him, and still. Uh, continue to support because uh, we have some meetings uh, even in LA we have meetings to support Navalny because he is in prison this moment mm -hmm. and he needs he needs our support so uh, but w w what we can do we can express our position yeah we can talk about it I can, like a musician, I can play music. I can uh, talk with people through my instrument. So uh, I think uh, every person can do something. Uh, and uh, maybe it could help to change something in our country. So, but uh, Alexei Navalny, yeah, he was one. Uh, not the one, but one of the uh, several, maybe uh, politician, political guys who who tried. Yeah. And he's he's in prison, and he's still trying, I guess, in his own way. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think. Yeah, um, he he still. Yeah, of course, he's still trying. Yeah. 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 And on a hopeful thing, how is your experience been in L.A.? 
do you like it here? Are you are you finding? Um, well, I want to be accounted one of your new friends, you know, in music and else and otherwise. And I'm appreciative of you being here and sharing your thoughts. But just in general, how are you digging LA? Of course, it's not my home. Yeah, but <laughs> if you move to another country, another city, uh, that is it. You're officially starting your new life. You know, in foreign lands or without people you know. And that means that you have to survive. First, first time you have to survive on your own. Learn about the new culture. Uh, learn the language and build new life step by step. Yeah, but yeah, I feel welcome here. There are so many cultures and people from all over the world in LA and in the US. So they all live in one country and it's really great. Well, I yeah. tell you what, you're my new friend from Russia and I want to extend a welcome hand to you. So what we got to do is go to like Koreatown, bring your wife, whatever, and I'll show you some of the cool places of uh because LA isn't just LA, LA is also Korea, it's Thailand, it's you know, <laughs> all these Asian influence. You've yeah, already of course. you've already been down into the hood, you know, in Lamert Park. Um, so you gotta get some of the, the soul food barbecue action going on. And <laughs> you know, you can begin your journey of being an international person. That's sort of what I like about living here myself. I grew up here, I'm from here, my family is here. But I do love the multicultural, international uh, cuisine cross currents that make my life, you know, way more interesting and fun than if I lived someplace that was just boring white people, you know. So um, I want to just say you're my new friend, and I, we we got to get together. Why Los Angeles? There's many places. There's New York. There's tremendous Russian communities all over this country. Why LA? uh yeah uh, I, of course uh the new york i think the biggest uh, city in the us maybe <laughs> yeah. in the america so uh but uh, the los angeles is big too i think it's the second place and i i, I was looking for a big city because it had more opportunities uh for me and for my family so and uh, there are so many musicians here in LA because I think if I moved uh, to a little town, <laughs> so there were not musicians. So right. I think jazz is a you know needs a metropolis, needs cities to flourish. You know it. Yeah. You know most of these <laughs> jazz musicians. From small towns, how the hell do I get out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, Stefan, I want to thank you for being here, man. And I want to wish you good luck. And I also want to say, you know, help people here understand, you know, really the Russian story here. I don't mean the, 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 the regime story, but the, the Russian people. Um, I suspect you've known people that have had to go to Ukraine and fight, um, maybe even die. So I do think it takes courage to be a, a, a jazz refusenik for the, you know, for what's going on there. And I'm hopeful that this thing will, this catastrophe will end sooner or later. And, you know, it's no accident that someone who's in pursuit of freedom is playing the music of freedom. And, and to me, that's jazz. And, you know, I think just the thing about tyranny in general is that tyranny cannot survive next to freedom. Russia, or a, a Putin-led Russia, cannot survive next to a neighbor that is enjoying the cultural fruits of freedom and the economic fruits of freedom. And they have, it, it's just, it seems like it's almost nature. They, they, there's so much resentment of the of the potential for freedom and posterity that that the dictator can't handle it 
you know, in my mind. So maybe there's some truth there. I don't know. Uh, but thank you, my friend, for being on a rebel without applause. And folks, come on down to the world stage and uh, check out Stefan Jazzy Vasiliev. <laughs> <laughs> the guy swings he's he's cool you know you get it this guy's got a cool vibe and you know being hip and cool can come from anywhere on earth and um we've got a brand new edition here is there any other place where you're performing in la that you know that you know maybe i could find out about because you're actually exploring i'm just lazy i lived here my whole life <laughs> yeah i visited a lot of jazz clubs <laughs> which is your favorite you know, one or tell me about the it. world stage of course <laughs> because i met there you <laughs> uh -huh. yeah I, I visited uh, the york club uh the mint club uh, i visited rhythm room which room uh, cool place uh, rhythm rhythm room rhythm, rhythm. Room, where's that i don't even know about yeah it's in downtown yeah it's a cool place and i think uh they have uh jam stations at first day too oh so, yeah check it out you know uh, for example uh yesterday i played with hero the piano player who was yeah uh, at the at the world stage yeah, we played at uh, Normand Bakery. It's it was a little place, but <laughs> what area of was... what area of town? Um, um, I forgot. I forgot the uh, the name of the street. But okay. if you want, I yeah, let me know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, Hero is a great player, and here again, he comes from Japan, you know, and you yeah. come from yeah. You you know Russia and I come from Hollywood and you know everybody can come from everywhere we we can speak the same language I I'll just yeah. relate this one story before I leave some years ago I went to Vietnam and I was traveling and I was in Ho Chi Minh City formerly Saigon yeah. and um, there was one jazz club you know and I traveled with my clarinet <laughs> and I went there and I, I mean I didn't know anything I did not know one word of Japanese okay I, I mean of, of Vietnamese. <laughs> not one word but i did know um autumn leaves <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i and they said well, you want i i i said i didn't even know what to say i just went eh, 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 eh. and they go okay you know what do you play and i go uh, autumn leaves and they go and i went and went oh, oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is the language yeah, yeah jazz is the language the yeah. language right. of jazz and you speak it fluently my friend so welcome uh to la and thanks for your story and to folks out there uh thanks for listening until next time as i always say namaste shalom and aloha by that i mean <laughs> namashaloha dig it aloha. <laughs> yeah Adio. Hey.